Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, April 7th, 2021, a commentary on verses 30 through 32 from Surah Al Baqarah by Sheikh Muhammad Fawzi Al Karkari, Qaddas Allahu Sirrah. Verses 30 through 32 read And when your Lord said to the angels, I shall appoint on earth a vicegerent, they said, Will you appoint therein one who will do corruption therein and shed blood? while we glorify you with praise and sanctify you, he said, Truly I know what you know not. And he taught Adam the names, all of them, and then presented them to the angels and said, Now tell me the names of these, if you are truthful. They said, Glory be to you, we know nothing but what you have taught us. Truly you are the knower, the wise. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةٌ قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا the Shaykh comments God addressed the angels who were the best of his creatures his chosen and protected ones luminous beings saying I shall appoint on earth a vicegerent we linked this to the authentic hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who says, God created Adam in the image of the All-Merciful, or in another narration, in His image. خَلَقَ اللَّهُ آدَمَ عَلَى سُورَةِ الرَّحْمَانِ or عَلَى سُورَتِهِ Both narrations are authentic. They're sahih. We said that the image of the All-Merciful does not mean shape or outward appearance, but that God made Adam annihilated in the presence of his Lord. Light upon light. Nurun ala nur. Yahdillahu li nurihi man yasha. God guides to his light whom he will. God chose the vicegerent and made his hearing light, his sight light, his speech light, his hand light, and his foot light. He made him light upon light as the Prophet وسلم, would supplicate as he walked to the mosque. We said that the vicegerent was adorned with the attributes and names of God, but that this adornment is not something that he acquired by effort. From the beginning, God proclaimed that he would appoint a vicegerent. And vicegerency is not something that is acquired. It's a gift from God to be his representative. This is true wilaya, true sainthood, prophethood, and messengerhood. Wilaya, nubuwa, risala. I have chosen you for myself. Stafaituka, stanatuka, linafsi. God chooses whom he will. And he chose Adam, the Adamic human being, and molded him from clay, then breathed the command of his spirit into him, making him annihilated in his presence so that he represented God on earth. In this way, nothing comes to you but what was destined for you by the divine measure, the taqdeer, which was ordained before time, before Adam existed. 
nor were the angels aware of it until God informed them of it. This is God's pre-apportioning. We also discussed the nature of the angels' reaction to this announcement and how they questioned it. Though they are protected from sin, luminous beings annihilated in the presence of God. Their question revealed that they were bereft of knowledge, or that if they did possess knowledge, it was not yet complete. They say, Will you appoint therein one who will do corruption therein and shed blood while we glorify you with praise and sanctify you? They did not understand how this Adamic being that God had chosen to represent him could be worthy of the vicegerency. For to them, he was a corrupt being who would disobey God upon earth. They didn't look upon him with the inward eye to perceive the holiness within him, how he was near to God and how he had passed away in the divine presence. They viewed him superficially. The same thing occurs in our time, when people tell you of a righteous person and you're immediately suspicious. Wait, how could he be a righteous man or a saint? Even if the divinely protected angels denied this vicegerency, how could you be expected to accept it with your simple mind? It's so hard for you to admit that any other person is a saint a prophet, a messenger, not without great difficulty. The verse therefore tells you not to rely on your intelligence and reason in this regard. God's folk tell the disciple that if he wishes to follow a sheikh, he must be like a corpse in the hands of the one who washes it. Do not rely on your knowledge, logic, or prior learning. Even the angels stumbled when they relied on their prior learning, for they viewed the vicegerent by analogy to the jinn who dwelled upon the earth before Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. The angels viewed Adam as a corrupt bloodshedder and viewed themselves as pure and superior to him as though they were hinting that the angels would be a better fit for the role of vicegerent. We glorify you with praise and sanctify you. Such an attitude is prevalent among all creatures, even the angels. He, Allah said, Truly I know what you know not. You cannot claim that you know all things, and no matter how much you know, you must always remain within the bounds of courtesy with God, for His knowledge is infinite. You can never assume that you know more than everyone else. You may think that you're the most knowledgeable of your circle, your family, your tribe, or whoever, but whether that is true or not, you cannot expand this to everyone on earth, for there may be people more knowledgeable than you whom you have not met, or of whom you are unaware. The result of viewing things in that manner is that instead of examining yourself, you look for flaws in others. Instead of changing yourself, you seek to change others. You think of yourself as pure, though God says, Do not claim purity for yourselves. God purifies whom he will. And... When it comes to knowledge, Allah Ta'ala says, Say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا So, never imagine that whatever level of knowledge you have reached is the final one. Your time in the world is a journey. It's a road. And as long as you're alive, you're still on the road and have not yet arrived. Arrival comes with death. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship your Lord until the inevitable, that is, until death, comes to you.
chapter 15, verse 99. The angels, too, thought that they had already arrived, that they were the folk of glorification and purity. But God tested them with the creation of Adam, the vicegerent, and they objected to this. Therefore God showed them the error of their ways. Knowledge is a gift from God. Verse 31 from Surah Al-Baqarah reads, And he taught Adam the names, all of them, and then presented them to the angels and said, Now tell me the names of these if you are truthful. The Sheikh comments, The vicegerency was a pure gift from God, and he then went further and endowed him with knowledge and wisdom. For the vicegerent, or this representative, could not be ignorant. And what was the nature of this knowledge? It was not some profane science, but knowledge of the names, the plurality of the names. Kulliyatul asma. Whatever name you asked, Adam would know it. When Allah says, Anbi'uni bi asma'i ha'ula. Now tell me the names of these. What did these refer to? The trace or effect, the athar of the name. He challenged the angels to utilize the knowledge they had attained from their praise and sanctification to identify the traces of those names that were unknown to them. Verse 32 reads, They said, Glory be to you, we know nothing but what you have taught us. Truly you are the knower, the wise. The Sheikh comments, Finally, they realized the distinction between what they knew and what they knew not, and confessed their lack of knowledge. They disavowed even their own knowledge and attributed it to the one who gave it to them, by saying, We know nothing but what you have taught us. We know nothing of our own accord. This was their awakening, their realization of who they truly were. Weak before the mighty, ignorant before the all-knowing, distant before the near. The appearance of the vicegerent showed them themselves. They say, truly, you are the knower, the wise. That is, knowledge is yours to give. Ar-Rahman allam al-Qur'an. The All-Merciful taught the Qur'an. It was not the people who learnt the Qur'an or taught the Qur'an, but the All-Merciful who taught it to them. You brought mankind into existence and endowed him with understanding, with knowledge, with intelligence, through the name of the All-Merciful, Ya Allah. This was the difference between the angels and Iblis. All they had was a gift from God. But when the angels slipped, they realized their error and repented to their Lord, confessing their true station as weak creatures before the Almighty, bereft of knowledge save for what God gifted them. If the angels are like that, then why do you, as a human being, argue so stubbornly? If you look back over your life, you'll see that you have made many errors, returning to God each time and following the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ. Sin and ignorance are always accompanying us one way or another, for that is our nature. But in His grace, God makes us aware of our errors and accepts our turning to Him in repentance. He creates our good deeds too, while our evil deeds are our own. Every deed that takes us away from God, every action we contrive with our intelligence alone, is a sin and a veil between us and God. Every good deed we do that is pleasing to God and His Messenger وسلم, recognizing in our hearts that it is a gift from God and that our intelligence and power have no share in it, that is true Tawheed. That's what it means to voice God's 
oneness. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallaita ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alamina innaka hamidul majid.